I'm just a cold dude. I'm getting back to my ways. Misha, can you hear me? Yep. Cool. All right, we're broadcasting. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Shout outs to Zach Sake, Bedsy, Winslow, LaRoche, and uh, Brandon Drew Holmes, Hannah Black. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Can you turn yourself okay. off? I can always turn myself off. Ooh, please. <laughs> cool. So, oh, hold on, hold on. I can't hear you. I want to hear my introduction. I don't want to miss out on that. <laughs> so I'm saying you could. Uh, you represented by Minerva, which is accurate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you did your first solo show in 2014 called uh, Albeit Though at Black Oak yeah, yeah. Projects? Yeah, I mean, like, technically, I don't want to show anyone any other shows, but, like, technically, you don't have my to shows. Show anything, any, I'm just going to talk about the work. Yeah, I'll, no, I mean, no I, mean, I mean, that's, like, the first one I'm, like, willing to admit to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, and that show was very, like, kind of post internet with these paintings that had, like, symbols of corporate culture and corporate digitality and stuff. And yeah, yeah, like this show wasn't super good. Obviously, I like the socks a lot. Um, Thanks. <laughs> but so Amishi has moved from doing that kind of work to what I read as like a rejection of didactic marginality, like a rejection of the very narrow positions that the art world affords marginalized people, and the ways that the art world expects marginalized people to be legible according to some set of criteria. Um, mm -hmm. Some of which, for me, would include like the trauma narrative or the absolution narrative, or the resiliency narrative, et cetera. Um, What's absolution narrative? The absolution narrative is like, I'm, I've been absolved of identity. Like, I don't care about it anymore. Oh, oh, oh okay. Right. Um, and so you got into this whole fight with your contemporary after doing the sort of marginal show in a fridge there. And I, I hope that you can talk about that later because seeing the beef on, the, on Facebook is pretty fucking hilarious, so. Yeah, yeah, after what, where, 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 I got into a fight with them after what? After the fridge show? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it kind of started before that. Like, you, you know, they saw me as a villain from the start. Um, I don't know why, but. Um, I wonder if it's yeah. because you're not white. Right. Maybe, I don't know, let's just see, like. <laughs> Let's have some faith, yeah. There's, there's no, there's, <laughs> the, <laughs> nothing suggests that race was involved. I feel like I've read that in so many like, police reports lately. Mm -hmm. That was a joke. It's, it's definitely because I'm not white. Yeah, no, I think we all know. I think we all know. Yeah, I think cool, cool, cool. Except for me. Oh, uh, uh, really? Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because they're not, not white. Oh, okay. Hey, hands up if you're white. No, not white. That's for like Frida. Um, so yeah, you know, like so one white person. Your work is <laughs> in Portland. No, Hamishi's. Have you even left Australia? Ever. Ever. In your yeah. life. Yeah. 
Okay. What do you think? It's not a pain. I mean, it is a penal colony, but like. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, did they let you out? Yeah, I mean, uh, I had a I had a travel embargo growing up. Oh shit. It sucks. Um, but yeah, they let me out. They're like, I'm trying to get out again. To where? To where? Uh, anywhere that will take me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Really, like actually, like if you know somewhere that'll like let me live, <laughs> hit me I up. My, I keep my ears. Hi, Mishi Donasia. Mela Carpenter on Instagram. Okay, cool. So is that a good introduction or should I keep talking about your work? Uh, let's, let's keep talking. Sorry, sorry. I'm just... I'm getting comfortable. I haven't spoken to anyone today. I had a couple words with Zach, but that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm here for whatever you need, buddy. I mean, I don't. I said, like, like, can you keep it going? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another thing that I really like about Hamishi's work is the use of, like, vernacular materials. Like, I mentioned the socks at his first, the admitted first show. He doesn't want to admit stuff from before that, which is fine. Um it was just a bunch of socks on the, on the floor of the exhibition space. And it felt really cool to me. I just liked it because it made me think of like defeat, so to speak. Um, I mean, she's like, yes, yes. <laughs> the taste of defeat. Um, yeah, I like the socks a lot. I really like that you're moving away from paint, like post internet painting. Um, mm. And you also do video work, which I think is really cool. Um, we screened Marginal Aesthetics, a video from 2014 at the homeschool launch. Um, and maybe later, if we have time, we can play it again, because I love that video. And you said you were going to make a second one, too, which is super cool. Yeah, I'd like to. I haven't been able to write in a long time. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not a very good... I mean, I'm, I'm, I am a good writer. I'm a very good writer, but like, um, I just haven't done it much. I get distracted really easily. Um, but yeah, I think if you want to play it later, I'd be happy to like uh, do some live director commentary. Oh, that would be so sick, oh, yeah. So sick. Is Billy the dog going to be in the second one? Um, I think so. I think, I think so, yeah, yeah. I mean, stay tuned, you know. We're still trying to like talk with Billy, talk with their people and try and yeah. um, work something out, you know. I still, it's hard with all the like, contracts and so many people involved. Contracts with the dog? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm sure Billy has an agent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you see today all the white women posting that meme about wishing that they were like a golden retriever in some like upper middle class Maine family? I thought that was really funny. It reminded me of the video. Aren't they? I'm just wondering, like, do white people just want to be fat? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. uh, Aurelia Go, uh, follow Aurelia Go on Twitter. Um, yeah, she had a good tweet, like, you know, do I want a dog or do I want to be a dog? Oh, and right. Like, uh, uh, I actually don't think he has the discipline to be a human cat. But I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, I think, it's, I, think, I think it's it's difficult, you know, like, I mean, if white people want to be a golden retriever, it's like, well, <laughs> um, yeah, do I want white people as a pet or do I want to, like, you know, assimilate and survive in a dog's world? Like, it's, you know. Mm-hmm. It's a dog it's tough. world, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So, what did I say I was going to talk about? I have no idea, bro. I have no idea, bro. Okay, okay. I'm going to read the event <laughs> sort of thing. Um. Okay. So, welcome to homeschool, everybody. Um. This is the first uh, remote artist talk. Uh. By Melbourne-based artist Tamishi Farah. Um, really happy y'all can be here today. Um, uh, now, in the artist's own words, I'm going to talk about constituency representation and let's work together to agree on who are the top five people in the room. Maybe maybe we should start there. All right. Um, are there more than five people in the room? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So if you... If you if you think that you're like one of the top five, just like stand up, come to the computer right now. I'm wait. I'm wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Oh wait. Like it's it's it, it's kind of like, you know, it can be quite like nerve-wracking and stuff to like 
you took a criterion for you know, judging my value. Are you one of the top five? Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, how about this? If you're one of the top five people, go stand by the table at the back there. What are you even seeing? What are you seeing? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like, uh, like the lights that are on, and there's like a, a long like work table. Maybe it's got a printer on it. Right. I want the top five people in the room to just go stand over there. I am going to talk back to you. Really? Alright, here we go, here we go. Two, three more, three more people. <laughs> I'm waiting. How ashamed of yourselves are you? It's just like, it's like what Manny said though. It's just like any achievement that I've done is like based on my whiteness and my parents and other and me going to school and all that shit. You know, it's just not, it doesn't make sense. Who's talking? <laughs> the value that is not in my mind. I just swear. Okay, okay, okay. So, who's there? Who's there? All right. And um, are there any white people standing up over there? Oh, Victoria, come back. Come here. I want to chat. No, no, don't you come back as in like you're not one of the top five people. I really like, I'm, I'm proud of you, you know? <laughs> I'm a mom. That's, I, keep, I went up there and stood up. I think that's really cool that you stood up. Um, and I just want to say, like, we need more people like you. <laughs> um, I think it's just, it's really great. Um, you, you know how to, it, obviously, you know, you can love yourself and see your value. And I think that can be really hard for white people today. Um, yeah, so I just want to say, like, that's awesome. I mean, all the rest, they know that they're fucking great, you know? Um, but yeah, well done. Thank you so much. Um, so, you guys figured out that uh, you're the top five people in the room. Um, I can't talk by myself here. I need to, like, I need, I need to talk with someone. Like, this is, I don't do this. Okay. okay. I can text you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so, so talk me through your feelings about standing up, I guess. Talk me through, you know, like, uh, like, 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 it, was it about being one of the top five people in the room or was it like wanting to like get it over and done with and not spend like half an hour with people like kind of too scared to stand up? Um, a little bit of both, probably. I think it was, I, I, I would have demanded you to come with me, so. <laughs> but I Sorry? I, I wanted Jamandia to stand up, so I said I would go if she would go. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you're biased about that, but that's okay. It's okay to be biased. That's part of the point. Um, yeah, so I think... Uh, could someone ask me a question about that? Yeah, I think Ben was asking a question. Yeah. I was kind of asking a question. I don't really have a question for him. Oh, I'm not talking. Sure. Yeah. Oh, hey, my name is Ben. Hey, hey Ben, how oh. you doing? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little um. Uh, I'm good. I'm comfortable. I'm too comfortable. I'm squatting right now, and it's very I wish pleasant. I was there. <laughs> you were what? I said I'm, I'm squatting at the moment, and it's very comfortable, but I imagine it won't be after a while. Yeah, yeah, I can't That's squat. I can't do it. Um, I got a weak but, core. But, <laughs> I got a weak core. <laughs> um, I guess the, the, I don't even have a question form, but I was thinking about not standing up because 
although I do see value in myself and the things that I produce and the actions that I undertake and I like respect the, the toolkit that I've built and I continue to improve on for moving in the world, but that my achievements are really not measurable against non white people because I've had an incredible like background that has allowed me to become the person that does the things that I do. Like my mom. Just what do you mean by an, what do you mean by an incredible background? I mean I've had an incredibly privileged like upbringing by parents who were not only supportive of me and my identity, whatever that could be, but were b- willing to support me as a creative person and told me to like follow the path that I wanted to. They were like white liberals who were born in the late forties and early fifties who had kids in their old. early forties. You know, so they're older yeah. and they want to fulfill my dream because they grew up with an idea of the world where that was totally plausible and they're getting smart and understanding the changes. But at the same time, anything I've done is based on that. And that's not, nobody has gotten is that. All percentage of people have gotten that. So it's, it doesn't make sense. Is yeah, your dad know. Bernie Sanders? <laughs> no, yo, I was at Starbucks. In the- that's how you sound right now. Like <laughs> Starbucks literally said, he gave me my coffee. He goes, well, here's your coffee, Mr. Bill Gates. And I was like, oh, Man, Jesus. Do you think you're a good person? Why are you, why are you running away? Do you think oh, you're a good God. person? Come back, come back. I want to talk to you. We just started. We're just starting. Come back. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, okay, okay. Um, it's like, all right, all right, fuck you for the privilege thing. Like, it's oh, not... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like that's just like a... Um, I don't know, almost like... Uh, uh, an acceptable way to like uh, ex- there's some sort of like universally better That's like horrible. life or upbringing that you've had <laughs> like you know like it really like centers that as the like does like the the the, the 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 history and experience to to, to desire right and I and I definitely respect that interpretation and if I could expand on what I said I think maybe it's more that like the, the ideal that I was trying to talk about is one posited by white supremacist, supremacist like cis heteropatriarchal capitalism as being the best one or one of the best ones is one of the most privileged ones. But if the way that I'm talking and thinking is like that, and it's something I'm not intending to do, like I'm, I'm more than willing to accept the fuck you and I'm happy to hear it really. Are you seeing anyone at the moment? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. what, who are they? Um, they are a uh, young cis woman living in Seattle. Do you want to know more about them? Seattle? Yes. Yeah, tell me more. Um, <laughs> I think we're all just here. Is she white? No. Do you well, live in Portland? Not. That's kind of far away. I live in Seattle. You live in Seattle. Okay, you came all the way. Thank you for coming. Yeah, because I'm like an island called Bastion, and it takes a ferry to get to them. So, so. Oh, I live on an island too. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit laggy. You're gonna have to forgive me. Um, you were saying you're seeing a cis black woman in Seattle. No, no, I was not. <laughs> I'm seeing a cis mixed race woman in Seattle. Me? Okay, like okay. Um. Cool. And how's that going? It's good. It's a, a very low-key, um, well-communicated, non-monogamous arrangement where we are, I don't know, we're doing well, I guess. It's very new. How, is, what, real new? What? What's the keyword and how new? It's very, I mean, it's just like the last month. A month. Cool. Okay. What's the keyword? I was saying new. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, okay, okay. Um, what about when it's not new anymore? It's get a little bit of old, get a little bit tired of that, a little bit like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's always kind of like, like that, and it scares the shit out of me, you know? What'd you say? I get like that sometimes, and it scares the shit out of me. Like, like while it's new, I'm like excited and fred, but I can't keep that. I have trouble keeping that going sometimes. Totally. It's really hard to just like feel excited about anything once it happens. It's like I really like deferring, you know, because of that. Like what do you think that's about? 
I don't know. Uh, are your grand what? Are your grandparents still alive? Uh, two of them are. If your parents are that old. Um, my parents are fairly old. Yeah, but their parents, the ones who died. Um, what died. about the ones that are alive? How old are they? Eighty-five and seventy-one, but she's not my biological grandma. Like a step grandma sort of thing. My parents are in there. Yeah, they started working. Do you out find it hard to like? They got a lot of do, do, do they live? Do they live? Do they live in like an old folks' home or outside of that? My grandparents. My grandparents? Or my yeah. parents. Your grandparents um, live independently, but that's why I actually moved to live that. where. They live independently, but that's why I moved to that island is so that I can be close to them because they need assistance a lot. Oh, okay, and that's kind of. Like, that's a lot of work, right? That's a lot of, like, energy, emotional energy, time. It's, it is and it isn't. It's, it's, they're very... Tell me. They don't want too much from me, but I just need to be a, around. Yeah. That's it? No, I mean, I do things like... So you could just, like, draw a picture of yourself on the wall and they're cool with that, like... My grandpa or talk to him or, like, drive my grandpa to the doctor or like get my grandpa to the ferry or like, cause my grandma has cancer and my grandpa has dementia and like there's like 10 people in my family and six of them have cancer right now. So it's just like mostly driving people to the doctor when other people can't do stuff and just being on call. Yeah, which is, which can be tough and it's a bit of a drag, no? It's, it, it's a drag to not be able to fully commit to things that I'm doing when I'm waiting to be called on. But as a whole, it's, they've been, they were really good to me. And I don't really feel like it's unwarranted what they're asking. So it's, and it's hard to be like excited, but it's hard, hard to be excited, like you're excited about this new relationship. Are you speaking with the, like, like you're talking about the like woman I was describing or are you talking about my grandparents? The, the, the one month thing, the, 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 the new one, the non-monogamous oh. uh, Seattle uh, no. uh, soiree that you're, you've been on for the last month. Sure. It, they don't really get in the way. They don't get in the way? Not particularly. That, that's special. You're a rare white person like that. I mean, I don't know. Like, maybe it's different in Australia. Um, but, like, because I've been, I've been thinking about, like, because I've got no time for, because I've got white grandparents. Um, my black ones are dead. Um, and... Uh, I got. I don't really have much time for them. You know, I don't. I don't like them. Much, and I think that's that's part of like a. Um, they're like the 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 Catholic, you know, and I feel like that's something I've. Uh, like I've inherited. How useless they are to me and to like, greater society. Uh, <laughs> um, so have they. Um. So it's like quite sad. Would you say that? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to get emotional stuff about that, but um, I guess I didn't really grow up with a, any sort of like relationship for them. And I guess I was just like, I was thinking about, about that in terms with like kind of staying excited about a relationship, but also even when like Manny was expressing that, you know, like, which I'm like glad that uh I have moved past uh, like the kind of post Cincinnati paintings I was doing. Um, yeah, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, because I read something just the other day that like lower middle class white dudes going down, um, Big which is the down. first time, uh, the, the life expectancy of lower middle class white dudes. Yeah. Which it's has it's never happened outside of war and um, Oh, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 go on, go on, please. How long I do you think you'll live? Watching this happen in the own, or I don't know how long I'm going to live, but my family was uniformly, like, middle class until this, like, more recent period where the American middle class is kind of just dividing. And everyone in my family was down really mobile except for my parents, who are in the, like, more upper middle class category now. And yeah. my family members who, who were down really mobile 
are mm. have changed in like their eating habits in this way, and that's the only thing that I can really say with any empirical knowledge. Well, in like a bullshit, like important. like macro, like douchebag kind of way. I just mean they're just not eating good. They're not eating very good food. It's not available to them. It's not affordable to them. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm broke. You know, like I, shit. I, Muesli and water and like bananas and like like chocolate hazelnut spread without bread. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel kind of like I, I, I can I can relate to that like downward mobility. Um, Are you still living in your studio? Yes, more so. What I was asking was like I, I wanted I wanted to know about how you felt about the like arbitrary people. About what kind of white people? The arbitrarity of old white people. Oh, um, Manny's talk this morning kind of confirmed a suspicion that I had, which is that. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's the suspicion? That white people don't have gender, and that's like a really crazy thing to say, but. Don't have what? That like gender applies differently to whites in this way, and like you asked like. What well, well, hold on. Before Manny said that, before Manny said that, did you see like. Black men and women is just like the black versions of white men and women. Not a, not at all, but I I just like in a different way. It wasn't about seeing like different races as being like analogous or comparable in terms of of gender, but that like in my own thing. Are you that. just are you, are you just saying that now? Because like no, I don't know if I, mean, I believe you. I don't really think. <laughs> that's, I mean, I don't blame you for not believing me. There's really no reason for you to believe me. I only have. Yeah, 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 totally lies so it's pretty much irrelevant i won't try to convince you um yeah you're not even going to try and convince me you want uh, top five people uh, in the room what you don't even going to try and convince me that you're one of the top five people in the room i just i'm uh, not interested in convincing you that why is that um yeah i feel like i'm talking too much you guys can keep talking about this later, but someone else has a question for you. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Who's that? Jamandria. Hold on, hold on. You might, it's just a bit laggy, so you might like, yeah, yeah, just bear with me. Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Good. I have a question for you. Well, I have one that was about. Yeah, what's, can you, can you say the question twice? Sure. So. Um, I've heard about Australia that, like, you know, Centrelink, that whole business there, if that's what Centrelink? it's called. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you heard about Centrelink. Yeah, Zach, they heard about Centrelink. <laughs> you know, yeah. I heard about because I, so there was um, a white Australian exchange student who was staying at the house of one of my friends, and I was like, oh. Tammons? <laughs> no, I don't, it was a woman. It was this, like, a blonde woman. Um. And I was like, oh, how do I want, hmm? I was like, how do I afford to be like abroad? Like I when I went to Europe, it was like all I saw, I saw like all these Australians everywhere. And I was just like, why is Australia really rich? Like I don't know why, like they're everywhere and they can travel. And then they were like, Oh, they're centrally and then there's like our our we have the two year gap here that's funded. And I'm like, do you experience that, like, as like a non-white person in Australia? Do you get all that money that's coming out of the government, or is that just like a story? Oh, no. like, oh, no. oh I mean, like, look, like, it's 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 tough, you know. Like, I mean, it's 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 um, I get I've been on Centrelink. I get Centrelink. Uh, I've been on Centrelink for like four years. Um. Right now, and it's not. I wouldn't see it as that much money. Like, but sixty dollars in my account, and I don't get paid for another like two weeks, week and a half. Do they like actually um, cover? Because you said they cover housing and stuff. Because here they do not cover housing. There's no such thing as a housing. Yeah, it, does, it, does, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't cover the housing. Yeah, I see. Like, I. Well, it kind of does, but like. Okay, cool. No, I was just curious about that. It works. It's like, it's not, oh, sorry. There's a bit of lag. I don't want to interrupt you. Go on. Oh, no. I was just, yeah, keep talking. Okay. It's like, yeah, there's like a, like social security system, but, you know, it, it, it's a, 
the toy is kind of like nanny state, you know, and it's a real um, like all in your business. Like if you want to get that money, they're all in your business. They they're all in your business totally. I mean, I've been gaming them for a while. Um, you know. <laughs> I mean, because I do. I have services in the U.S. and I'm just like, they don't even give you anything in the U.S. They like put you through hoops for nothing for like fifty bucks. You know? But you gotta realize that like most like left leaning Australians are like like mortifyingly at any. Uh, expression of Australia or any like representation of Australia um, because an Australian identity is so frail you know that this sort of like this sort of like safety net for a huge swathe like the, 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 the kind of you know like lower middle and below if, if there wasn't Centrelink then they probably wouldn't be a notion of Australia. There's no other r real reason to like constituate yourselves within this. And I think like it's a really different. Um... Like... Pardon? No, I'm like that's like interesting because it's like that is not how it is in America. Totally. Like... I mean, that's <laughs> it. Like, um, there's the. I don't know if you know a right. Hmm? Well, you know there were some riots in Sydney. Um, Oh yes, the race riots in Sydney. Yeah, I the, the, the the white the white surfers going around and like beating up everyone who was. <laughs> like, yeah, they were like, wait, they do, are they like all stoners and they're just like rolling around beating people because they're not white? Like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, but that that's pretty much it, you know. And it's like the um, there has been and there is no space for any like Australian identity outside of the like and not to pronounce that word um, I think it's my first time trying to say it so give me a break uh, like default white Australia, you know which is like quite severe and quite intense because what it does is it produces this like it, 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 it accelerates um, or a guilt because when you see any representation of Australia, it's like extremely, extremely obvious that that, you know, that identity or that like um, projection of what it means to be a not represent the population. So it's like when, I guess it's like when the sum of all marginalities start to outnumber the, you know, like dominant position what happens? Well, it's really different in the U S because, you know, within like, a, you, there's, 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 there's like self defined, uh, like diaspora cultures, which aren't, you know, I mean, you can argue how self defined they are because, you know, so much, much of based on like, you know, acceptable forms of blackness, acceptable forms of Asian or whatever, but like, in Australia, there's like you know, Australians, Indigenous Australians, and refugees. You know, like I, I was born here, but I would probably be seen as like a refugee. I'm like half, you know, I'm not half white, but like even though my mother is white, um, like there's no space for any, you know, like identifiers outside of that. And I'm gonna like use that to kind of. Say, I'm just looking at the what I talk about. Um, so. I guess yeah, it's like art in Australia too, because I'm curious about that. Yeah, I'll get into it in one second. Um, and I guess like <laughs> that, it's like a failure of representation. But that failure of representation, like, is like uh, like a he like a, you know, I'm not very smart by the way. Um, a heavy like like institutional failure, like, and it's it's obvious now. Uh. In the same way, that's why, like, when there, I'm sure you all know about the Australia's disgusting, disgusting uh, asylum policy. Yeah. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, um, if you come to Australia by boat, 
uh, they'll lock you up on an island and leave you there for, uh, and maybe just take you to some other country you've never been to. Um, and I don't feel guilty about that. I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel anything because, I mean, I feel like terrible. I feel, I feel empathy. Um, but you know, like the, anyone making that, I, I don't feel considered by the same institution that makes that. But it's like, how can I, uh, um, so, or like how, how can I make my gesture of non-constituation feel like real? Do you know what I mean? Are you? No. So like, how do I make my, um, like my feeling that I'm not represented by that, my lack of guilt, my like, my position inside and outside of Australia, how do I make that real when the notion is that like, like Australianness is projected onto me in a way that I can't control. You know what I mean? I feel that way too about like a lot of stuff. I feel like a lot of, it's just so strange in America, like the way that blackness works on bodies. And so that like we have a black person who's like very deadly, you know, he's like extremely yeah. deadly and he is like a killer and that's like real. And then there's like people for whom he represents like a black body and power. And so they feel safer and they feel like their lives can expand and they can have dreams now because look at the black body in the space that I've been taught to fetishize. So, Wait, can like, you repeat that a bit again? And who are you talking about? Obama. I said that he's okay. a killer and he's dangerous. And yeah. that, like, um, that people don't interpret him in that way because they need to be able to look at him as a black body occupying a space is, is like of, of his hope. And that's also why he's a dangerous killer. He's manipulative because these people needed hope. He used that word. And so he's like a saint. He's like a fantasy figure because he's, he doesn't like, he mm -hmm. doesn't much for like black people in America like he's done amazingly little like it's actually like when you look at it on paper it's just like man are you serious mm. you know <laughs> like he does not mm -hmm. care but like um at the same time there's people who take like sustenance from his position because they're like oh man maybe this whole idea of striving is real and so I won't mm. feel my you know, that's like, because like, there's like so much suicidality in black American culture. That's like, that's mm. like an art project that's really big. I want to work on like in the American South, like in the American South, black American culture is very suicidal. And it's like intergeneration. Yeah. Because it's like, there's hope and then there's not hope. You know, <laughs> it's actually like for like, cause it's happened so many times in the American South where like people got money and got okay. And then the white people came and stole their stuff yeah. and killed everybody and burned everything down. Yeah, this burned yeah, everything yeah. I mean, like, like, like Tulsa? Yeah, like Tulsa. And then there's other, there's like mass graves all over the South in America because <laughs> it's just, they just kept like coming in and killing black people. And yeah. so it's like, like, people think that like, I don't know, that we're embedded in this country as like a pop, as like patriots. And like, you know, my auntie thinks she's a patriot, but she's been under this boot her whole life. And so it's like, she's not responsible think, and I'm not responsible, you know, like I'm not responsible for America and you're not responsible for Australia, you know, <laughs> like that's do you, think that, do you think that's why people are scared of like Kanye West? Because Kanye West is like, is, is having their, their breakdown in public. And it's like, also like, they're obsessed with both proving and not proving. It's like the minute they get cornered and they're like, supposed to prove, they're like, I don't care about anything. I'm going to do all this messed up stuff. I have money. Like, that's, like, what they do. And I think that's really brave and actually vulnerable, Kanye West. Like, for all that he's, like, you know, he's just being, like, a black body in reality, acting vulnerable and acting wild. You know, he's not responsible the same way. You know, it's, like, this is how, like, capitalism affects him. This is how it affects, like, people in other places. Like, this is how your oppression affects you. Sometimes I feel like black people, like, you're not responsible in this profound way. You know? Mm. <laughs> it's just, like... It's like the agency is so interpolated with like being a functional like cog 
in an oppressive machine mm. that that there's there's so few ways that we actually choose to move that when we do move and it looks like chaos it might be like upright but it's not nobody's yeah. going to perceive it as such you know but, i want to ask a question um uh polyamorous white boy before was talking about <laughs> how um <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, was it Ben? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to take a lot of space when you wanted to. I thought of the answer that the the right answer to give you, which is that what I was really trying to come along to, and I was thinking. Well, hold on. I didn't tell you at all. Oh my bad. Uh, I mean, I mean, sorry. Um, person I was talking to before. Can he talk for a second? You gotta ask her. Come on, man. I'm sorry. Everybody just told well, me. I don't know. You just like you just like jumped in front of a walk around like a good white man, and then just like you know. Is it cool if we both? You want us both here? Yeah, yeah that's great. That's great. Oh, do you want? I actually have a movie. Want both? I just I just wanted to ask, like, you know, thinking about because I got a very limited experience, you know, and like. Uh, blackness in America has like a like has had like a bizarre like uh, shaping of my identity because like I you know I grew up with very few ties to like African community um, and like in like you know lower middle class like the white suburbs with like a pretty like you know internalized white supremacist white mother um, you know I was like hip hop culture was the only like acceptable form of blackness that I was exposed to, you know, acceptable in the sense that it exists within, you know, capital, it takes up space, you know, and, and that, of course, like that space, you know, has to do with a desire um, or like fulfilling. Sorry for you, like who represent that, like which artists, like which musicians and stuff represent that for you? Oh, I mean, like, I'm, like, really, like, uh, I wouldn't say, like, one or two musicians in general. I mean, like, more so, like, you know, your pop culture is our pop culture, you know? We don't really have our own thing. Like, that's part of the, like, lack of Australian identity and shame thing I was talking about. Um, so, I guess I, I, I'm saying, like, late 90s, uh, oh, gee, like, uh, like, you know, G unit days, like, um, I don't know if Buck, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and like jewelers and, and like, uh, <laughs> um, but what, what I was trying to say, I guess, or what I was trying to ask, yeah, Ben, you were talking about just like the kind of discovering the way that white supremacy is gendered um i want to know like what do you think the difference is between and i'm not from america i can, I can only speculate you know but like the difference between th the way that you could get behind or the way that american can get behind a black male celebrity and a black female Celebrity. That's a good question. Yeah, that is. Ben loves that music. Yeah, it's true. Can you make sure? I participate. Hey, in can you, like, can y'all come closer to the mic? I can't. I can't. I can barely hear. Totally. I said that's a great question because Ben actually likes rap a lot and makes rap and is like involved in this sort of up and coming Tumblr rap group called Rap. Ah, uh, you're a Tumblr rapper. I'm not a rapper. No, no, he makes. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fucking hilarious. Yeah, that would be hella funny. What is a Tumblr rapper? Am I like. Am I, like I feel like that's kind of a term that I've heard mostly white people know. use to deride black people who use the internet. But. Because I was like, I didn't know there was like a genre now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're just a Tumblr rapper. I feel like. <laughs> In the like white social structures that I've encountered that that are like predominantly white people talking to white people about black stuff, 
Tumblr rap is like a way of describing a non-aggressive performance by a black person that doesn't match their like racist expectation that black musical expression in the rap form is going to be thug, which is kind of interesting oh. that you would use that term. You mean like, like seen it as being mostly racist. Also, are we talking about like people who are making like experimental music in their black centric? Yes, and it's on the internet. And it's oh, that's rude. It's, yeah, yeah, he's talking about like Kendrick Lamar. Really? Like, I'm just, like, like black excellence as dictated by white people. I mean, I don't know. There's something bizarre for me. Like, <laughs> like, people are just like. Gotta come closer to the mic. My, my, you know, Apple's making these quiet headphones. <laughs> <laughs> but go on, keep talking. I, 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 I just want to know the difference between. Yeah. Oh, between how a black male and a black female celebrity would well, be interpreted. You, you can get behind it. You know? That's the of black people. I do Pardon? So that's like kind of a, like that's the thing is like I'm always never sure whether or not I should stop doing this because I I keep coming up to these like ending points where it seems like and this is what I really meant when I said like I was finally confirming like whiteness like I guess I should have said like whiteness precludes gender in a way that is like about like in white supremacy ultimately I can just go home to my house and being white is enough for me to be allowed to live speaking of necro power like I don't need an identity all I need is to be white and I'm allowed to live so like even if I have gender dysphoria or this or that that like ultimately my whiteness would trump that and that's really what I meant so whether or not I support mm. black do you people, feel um do you I feel like a bad person no I don't for what for listening to rap music general no, I, I really don't. Because well, I, I feel like um, the way that you... Mm, I don't know. Like This is just my personal experience, what I've been thinking about lately. But I feel like, um, you know, like, uh, obviously, like, good white people is white, white supremacy, you know? Um, and whiteness doesn't exist without white supremacy. So there's, like... I don't know, like there's the, the white people that I love kind of are always the first people to tell me that they're evil. I don't feel like a bad person, but I also do not ever feel that I can be absolved from what the violence that having a white body enacts in the world that like everything is just about getting to the lowest possible level of violence that my body does. Like no matter what my body says, means, acts, whatever my subject does, like having a white body that presents as male and all of that is always going to be violent in every case, no matter what. And I know that, and I know that's bad at the same time. And maybe this is fucked up thinking. The reason I don't think I'm a bad person is because I didn't choose to be born white. But at the same time, I have this white body that enacts violence on people, no matter what, in every circumstance. So like in the sense, what do you like, love about being white? What do I love about being white? To be honest, I love not being hassled by the police. I love, all kinds of white privileges. It's like those things. It seems pretty chill. I mean, it, it, it's like very. It is very it's chill. Like go and stuff. and it, I go shopping. And it's like, <laughs> I just walk around. You know, like totally. Nobody fucks with me. I, ever. Ben, I think, I think, I think, I think it would be like if you want to be a good white person. But you I just think people are, are that whole idea is people. Are you setting up for some? To, to I, no, 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 no. I'm, I mean, I'm, that's the thing. Do, never trust me. I'm always setting you up. Never um, I'm always <laughs> sitting you on. Um, but like, I think like you got to extern angry. You get frustrated about something. You got to like put it in the world more. You know? Yeah, definitely. Like, if you have an art, the the notion of being the bigger man is just like staying quiet and letting like uh, the structural inequality with the pursuing do the work for you. You know, like those maybe like, you know, like uh, a white decolonization might be about like um, more like closer to like, you know, like, you know, when they have like those like, uh, like white, like college football fans, like celebrating, but it looks just like a riot. Yeah, totally. Yeah, more, but just call it a riot. I don't know why I feel such a strong feeling when I listen to rap music and it's very troublesome because I can I, can I, 
Can I get an, can I get can I get a black person to like like tell tell me how they feel about this? About what? Just, what, just what you're talking about? No, but like you and like where you're at, you know. The recording industry was made for white people. That's like where it started in '79 with Shooter Gang. Who's talking? Me, Manny. Oh, I can't see you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You want, you want to see me? Did I move? Oh, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So, Mishi, where would you like me to move? I don't know. You move where you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more interested in wondering why Ben feels it is wrong to like rap music because, like, yeah, Ben, that's the thing. I want to. I feel like this is funny thing, right? Where like maybe you walk into like some house party, mm -hmm. see like a bunch of white people like dancing to like, I don't know, like, uh, I mean, saying Bobby Schmurder would be like a extremity, but like, I mean, would there like, even like Fetty Wap or something, music? right? Yeah. Well, no, but I'm saying like, do you think like like some time like a cringe in there, right? But do you think, do you think like, you know, like Rich Homie Kwan or like cares about the problematics of you guys listening to that? Or do you think Rich Homie Kwan's getting paid because you guys are doing that? It's the latter. It could be both, but I think that for most rappers who are not white, they're thinking about the latter. And like, as long as they're what? capital it's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, obviously, pardon. That could obviously be considered a problematic approach, but I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, I think like the problem becomes the the disharmony between the way the white app are like seeing themselves versus the actual value they're like. Uh, the or what's what's you know like what's the point in problematizing it? Right. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I feel like that, like, or, I, I mean, I don't know. I feel it, but I like, oh, sorry. Um, I feel like, and this speaks to the question you were asking about uh, gender in terms of like black celebrity. I feel that sometimes like a white audience when approaching like a black celebrity, there's a this it there's almost this like sometimes to me and I feel like sometimes I feel this way, there's this like aspect of consumption. Like you feel like you're consuming someone or you feel like there's and there's like an aggression to that and it almost feels sometimes it almost feels like even though you're interested in a music, there's this like sense of like violent consumption. And that sometimes feels very well, like, like, like every day, like waking up each day, having like a, um, you know, a, a future and kale smoothie or something like really consuming. Yeah, like well, a, it's like you're making it part of your like, you know, your like healthy, clean eating lifestyle to listen to this certain type of like black artist. Um, and it feels it like you're, you're yeah, you're consuming it for your identity. And that that almost feels violent. And it fe that that violence has a very gendered quality to me, because I feel like I see that with with black, uh, like female celebrities we perceive as female, this consumption feels even more real. You know, there are a lot of like white boys who are obsessed with Rihanna. And they're they're like obsessed with her. They want to eat her. They like want they like want to consume her. And they feel like that makes it like part of their healthy identity is to consume this like black female celebrity. And I feel like that feels very well. I mean, oh, I totally. I mean, it, I mean, things have always been that way. Um, but also, so like, and I guess like that consumption. And, you know, like offering that is kind of like, and, and satisfying that need is like one, one of the few ways that you can <laughs> uh, get out of the, um, 
like structural bounds on your actual body, you know, that, that, that the cash that you get for being, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but what, what, so it's kind of like, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, uh, you know, like pay me, you know, like, uh, give you money to win women. Yeah. Black people. Um, if, you know, if we're going to be providing, uh, avatar for, uh, and more like white ideological growth, mm-hmm. we're better get be getting like I don't we don't give I don't, we don't give a fuck what, you know yeah what what your like progressive ideology is especially if that same progression is like really filtering down into like a you know like 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 peaceful protest or or you know like uh peace discourse is constructive criticism for hegemony. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just strengthening white supremacy and white supremacy's reflexivity. And that like ideological su- supremacy is that then you know, like kind of weaponized mm-hmm. against the rest of the world. Yeah. Which is- like a, um, which really reinforces like uh mm, mm, but and then that 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 like like I think that comes back to like everything else existing not just ideologically in proximity like not just physically in proximity to you know whiteness and the states but also like ideological prom I guess the question more so I was asking was totally different it was more about um like i guess another way to rephrase is do you think there's a righteousness that white people can feel about a black celebrity a black female celebrity that they can't feel yeah i mean i definitely think there's a righteousness i think there's a righteousness in like in in that consumption then there's also a righteousness and the ability to like disavow it like we can feel righteous in either consuming it or not consuming it. Like either way, we like have. The what do you, What does that mean? So, like, if I was to be like, I don't participate in the kind of music because I'm to participate in it would be appropriating it. I feel good about myself in doing that. Like, I can feel good about. You myself. feel good about yourself and not giving them money. Yeah, I can. I can like. Yeah, I can feel good about myself in doing that. Or and I can feel good about myself. Like like like, like don't. Doing it. Don't, don't, um, yeah, don't, you know, you're just encouraging them to, to, to keep being like, um, uh, uh, like un- morally debaucherous black people sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Don't give them your money. Yeah. Or, you know, I can feel righteous and you mentioned like give women your money. Like as a white woman, I can feel righteous in like, you know, like tweeting that and feeling good about myself unquestioningly or I can feel righteous and I can feel good about tweeting that and being like this is racist like I get to feel good either way I think this is a good example of like the yeah I think it's a good example of the absolute scenario yeah I'm absolved of my identity can you can you guys can you guys like take it back like 20 seconds I would, because I mentioned the absolution narrative that you asked about before, and I think this is a good example, like the way that consuming media, um, in a certain way, can make you feel like you're absolved of your material embodiment, right? Uh huh. Wait, exactly. It's like, well, to uh, you know, like reflexive, growing, you know, like left leaning. Do black people exist for anything other than ideological growth for yourself and your people? I, I kind of wanted to ask you about because I know you mentioned that 
Um, and I agree with this, given like my experience in the Dominican Republic, which is that America as an imperialist state sort of exports black culture as a symbol of its own. I want to say. Hey, Manny, can you come closer to the mic? I, 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 you, you, yes, you, um, I can hear you better. Uh, kind of hear you, but um, it's glitching a little bit, so I like miss a whole lot of words. So if you're a bit louder, I can probably hear it all. Yeah. So I wanted to ask. Or, or just sort of get your perspective about um, like American imperialism and how that relates to respectable or like legible blackness, specifically in the sense of like America exporting black culture as like a sign of its success or something. Like America's awesome, mm. listen to jazz, or America's awesome, listen to rock, listen to rap, you know, all these different manifestations of like cultural wealth and the financial security of being American, right? and sort of twisting blackness into this nationalistic commodity. Because you said that Australia has one of the few like legible blacknesses in Australia is American like yeah. rap blackness, right? And that's mm -hmm. the same in the public. So I'm wondering like, to what extent do you feel like there are ways to get around that? Well, I think it's really difficult because it's like, you know, with the crux of whiteness, it's obviously just like, you know, like uh, amalgamation and violence mm -hmm. on bodies, on black or like brown bodies. Um, and um, and like, you know, when I say amalgamation, I mean like, you know, violent appropriation, like, you know, the, the, the you know, English language is only the dominant, you know, like a uh, language because of how malleable it is, you know, and during the periods of colonialism, it, it grew by like two or three, 200 years. Um, and I think that when you think about that difference between the year uh, that America has really provided the conditions for perpetual growth and appropriation because of the way that it's constituated blackness. You know, it's like you no longer need, uh, you know, Picasso going up looking at African shit to like, like well, hot. And I guess, are you, you're still there, you're a bit frozen for me. I was just getting onto the good shit. Uh, I'm going to go on Facebook and see if you try and talk to me. Oh, I think I lost him. I oh, know it's such bullshit. No, I lost you guys. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're all catch like I'm, you know, I'm like Neo. I, I know Kung Fu. Uh, what's up? So where did I, where did I end up? Where did you end up? Where did you call? Maybe, can I turn off the video? For the talk, uh, if you want. I mean, just because like, it's really, I don't know how much of me you just heard then. And it's like, it seems pretty poor. Oh. You want me to turn off your video? I don't know. I don't know. Can we fix this? It seems like we're going to do both, yeah.
<laughs> Yo, can you hear me? Hello. Is your audio on? Damn. Can you unmute your audio? Please, hello. Damn it. Hello. Man. Yo, can you hear me? I can't hear you. I'm mute. Oh my goodness. Okay, 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 okay. Well, do you want me to just go on a little bit of a rant? Can you hear me? Am I am I clear or am I like a bit screwed up. Okay, cool. Um, well, I guess what I was talking about was, oh, yeah, yeah, how, so, if, I guess if America can, yeah, yeah we can play it in a second. Um, if America can be like, um, can, she went like, uh, you know, exterior things to whiteness, um, then it can perpetually progress whiteness um, because it can keep, you know, double, um, and like as it double dips and as, you know, like the value in a new sound or a freshness, you know, like when we get excited because like we hear some music we haven't heard before or like we see some paint or some painting, some style we've never seen, you know, it's like, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of thrilling because of its position outside of the like, you know, regulated white known. And, you know, after that, obviously, you know, through that process of legitimization and the process of consumption, it, then just becomes an uh, um, uh, avatar for that consumption, you know? It's like the way that you look at, like, a trend, like, two years ago, you know? Like, I bet you if you, you know, you log on to the jogging right now and, like, you just, like, your stomach curls um, because, uh, 
all all it looks like or like you know like not even anymore but like you know if you saw like an like a like an emo like two years ago you know it would be like there's there's there's, there's, there's a shamefulness for your implication in like consuming and like locating it you yeah. know cementing how it has become known and and you know that like that process of like canonization is really you know just like identifying something in proximity to the center in proximity to whiteness you know so when you when you're talking about like um you know uh accepted forms of like blackness or accepted forms of black masculinity um that like you know the the it's 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 not just the fulfillment it's the fulfillment of that that same projection but like in It's like it's like if emo was sentient, you know. Um, can you if I if I can, can we get someone like type like Manny? Can you like type to me and like because I can't see or hear anyone. Um, but you know I need a vibe of someone. I'm not like a. I'm I'm in an island. No, no Hamishi is an island. Oh, oh. So nice. So glad you laughed. Um, yeah. So it's like what you know, poly poly person before was saying about like how they want to let you know they're they're they not to like um, let something be defined in proximity to them. I guess the reason I say that is a lot. I is I'm doing the same thing, you know, like I've so deeply internalized what is allowed to be fresh within its like proximity to whiteness. And you're still perpetuating that, that like, motherfucker, I, I, how can I begin to believe that like, you're not doing that? <laughs> like, I'm doing it. You're doing it. Um, so I guess that's something I struggle with, you know, because really like what that, that urge and that like, you know, drawing something in is colonialism, you know, and it's like colonial culture and like colonialism, not it's something that happened, but as a whole way of like, not just like, like semi understanding the world, you know, and understanding you know, like progress or like, you know, satiate, like satiation. But and I, I guess like, I don't know, like, yo, Manny, you like, you know about Eros, right? I'm waiting for you to type back to me, right, by the way. Like, like Eros, the like, like love, like the the desire. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Um, that, that's it, like Eros in that sense, you know, Eros is colonial culture, Eros is this like, like insatiable desire, you know, to like, you know, have like a lack, um, and you think you know what you want, you know, but, and, and, it, but, and you know, you're sometimes you're kind of aware, it's just your projection of something rather than the thing in itself but it's like it almost doesn't it doesn't matter you know in the same way that like i could make a work that like you know is investigating whiteness and then my gown you know like collector and talk about how you know my practice is about like um my does a uh, somali diaspora or it's like a black person, you know, and it's like, it doesn't matter that what I'm actually, you know, uh, it matters how it's, 
how it how do you how do you begin to shift that and um, you know i think there's a secession involved which is obviously like not not working to try and like fix these like amalgamative institutions but working to set up some rules about them and really like understand how they work and i guess that's how i think about music you know i think that's why i think about rap music as like you know 100 years ahead of contemporary art because contemporary art and is allergic to rules you know it, it posits itself as this like um you know infinite divine well it, it the extra 50 have you have you i made that in 2014 have you seen what's happened to hip-hop in the last two years Yeah, the last two years were 50 contemporary art years for hip hop. Uh, and like, because of, you know, those like, that like lack of bounds or something, is, you know, like pretty, Things have changed. So I'm getting lost here. I feel like I'm kind of just like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, let's play. Ooh, the new one. No, you want to play the old one. Play the hits. What do you think? Old one or new one? I couldn't really get my thought out, you know. I'm a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play the old one. Play the old one. Do you want me to like, Commentate or like take questions during it. You can pause it and we can talk. Maybe it'll be confusing. You know, I think there's, there's, you know, that's it. Like I'm still on this prison island in Australia. City's bars here. And like, um, Uh, it's kind of difficult without being able to see anyone. But yeah, let's play. Let's play that video. Mm. Real slow. I don't like talking to myself. It's not a good angle.
that was good. The fucking tech stuff's really annoying. I, I, I don't know if I'm still on. I'm gonna turn it off. Oh my god. 